Son, and the Holy Spirit. Slava Jesus Christ. There was a new priest who stood at the church door greeting members as they left after divine liturgy. And most of the people were very generous, telling the new priest how much they liked his message, except for one man who said, Pastor, that was a very dull and boring sermon. And a few minutes later, the same man appeared in line again, and he said, I didn't, I don't think you did much preparation for your message, did you? And then he went to the end of the line a third time, and this time muttering, Oh, you really blew it. You didn't have a thing to say today, Pastor. And finally, the priest couldn't stand it any longer. And he went to the parish council president, and he inquired about this guy. And the president said, Oh, don't let that guy bother you. He's like that. All he does is go around repeating whatever he hears other people say. So hopefully, nobody's talking today. You better not be, all three of you are here. Today in the Gospel, imagine, and in fact, it's striking last Sunday and this Sunday, uh, how we can reflect on what's happening in our world and how God's Word is speaking to us, at least to me, speaking so clearly and giving us, giving us courage and confidence in the face of what we're experiencing. That is the Holy Spirit at work. And so imagine this Father... And just even think about it in our context, right? So imagine that his son has the coronavirus. And he's brought him to doctors, for example, and they can't help him. And his son is getting sicker and he's getting more desperate, right? This situation he has, you would think it would kill him. Have any of you this past week wondered whether or not this virus could kill you? I think it's in the back of our minds, and today is a great opportunity in the context of our prayer to lay that before the cross of Jesus, right? To lay that at the feet of Jesus. If you have any kind of preoccupations or anxiety, uh, today, like the Father, we can come and bring that to Jesus. And it's interesting that, uh, you know, so often in our world, uh, like the disciples, and it's interesting if you reflect a little bit about you know where we've been and where so much of our culture and society is today. It's perhaps in some ways uh, one of the one of the reflections of this whole experience is that I think in many ways we as humanity uh, we're creeping more and more to a point where you know what we've got it all figured out. Don't worry, God, you know what, you can stay in the background, we'll look after this. And perhaps the disciples somewhat personify that, right? Because, and they, like us today, in so many ways, we've encountered a situation that we seemingly can't deal with on our own. And so there's an invitation for us on one level. There's an invitation for us to reflect a little bit about where, has, what place has God have in our life over the last little while? Have we perhaps relegated Jesus to the background and instead, right, we was, we're going to live our life as we choose. We're going to live our life and figure things out ourselves. Today is a great time to reflect a little bit and elevate God to the front of all that we do, to place Jesus Christ in front of everything we do, not as an afterthought, but instead to put Jesus in the center and the heart of what we do. Because we do face, and these days is a perfect experience, we do face moments in our life, I don't know what to do. I believe, help my unbelief. Today, that's the, what I'm recommending for us today as our prayer. Jesus, I believe, help my unbelief. Doubts we know are normal and an expected part of our human experience. It's natural to doubt anything we cannot know with certainty. And the more urgently we need to know what we do uh, not, the more deeply we will feel, feel our doubts. So for example, I can know that the universe is 93 billion light years in size, as scientists currently estimate. But my doubts don't affect my life unless perhaps I'm an astrophysicist. 
But if I doubt that God can protect me and my family from coronavirus or heal us if we are infected, my doubts become very real and very personal, don't they? And so faith in God is like faith in anyone else in that it is a, re is a relationship rather than a scientific experiment. All relationships require a commitment that transcends the evidence and becomes self-evident. And it seems to me that if you think about the gospel, think about that scene of the father coming to the disciples who can heal him and then bring him to Jesus. It's Jesus, the body of Christ, that ultimately heals him. And so it's perhaps... Uh, I know it's sad, and it's, but it's perhaps ironic that as we gather for this liturgy that, you know, the experience of communion, of receiving the body of Christ, is something that won't be happening for many of us today. And yet today is an invitation, though, for us to receive the body of Christ, to turn to the body of Christ, and to receive all that our God has for us. I cannot prove to you that I love my wife or that she loves me. But you would have to experience our relationship to know its reality. You cannot prove you should take a job before you take it. You examine the evidence, but then you step beyond the evidence into a commitment that validates itself. And it's the same with our Lord. There will always be dimensions of our relationship with Him that transcend certainty and require our faith. And at such times, Doubts are natural and normal. And so what should we do with such doubts today? Well, the Father said to Jesus, first of all, I believe. The Greek translation of this believe is to trust in, to have confidence in, to rely upon. And so the Father's faith, faith was not merely intellectual, but was personal. He had enough faith to bring his suffering son to Jesus' disciples in the hope that they could help him. And even though they had been unable to heal his son, he had enough faith to turn to the Master now. And so when we face what we don't know, let's remember what we do know. Nothing about this boy's suffering or the coronavirus pandemic changes anything about the nature of God. He is as powerful today as when He created the universe. God is as, is as omniscient today as when He led His people into the Promised Land. Remember that God hears our prayers as fully today as when He has heard Christians praying over the centuries in times of need. And remember fundamentally that He loves us as much today as He ever has. That's important for us and always our good news. So this might be something for us to reflect on today. What have you experienced about God in the past, in your past, that is relevant today? What prayers has God answered for you? What needs has He met? What sins has He forgiven? In what way can you say, I believe? The second part of the Father's Prayer is one that might surprise us. Help my unbelief. Just as an atheist is one who denies God, so this man's unbelief seemingly contradicted his belief. When we have such doubts, we may think God will hear us or help us, but actually the opposite is true. Remember St. Thomas, the disciple who didn't meet the risen Christ with the other disciples, right? What did he say? Unless I see the hands and the marks of the nails, place my finger into those marks, place my hand into his side, I will never believe. Did Jesus criticize Thomas for his doubts? Did he condemn or judge him? Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands. Do not believe, do not disbelieve, but believe. Or think of uh, Matthew 28, the end of Matthew's Gospel, when Jesus, the risen Christ, meets with his disciples. We hear this every baptism, this Gospel, right? And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. It's interesting, despite their doubts, Jesus commissioned all of them to go and make disciples of all nations, and they did. Like Thomas and the other apostles, we can bring our doubts to God. 
We can tell him where we are struggling and ask for help. And if we don't have faith, we can ask for faith. We can pray, Lord, give me the courage to have faith. And if you're like me, these days, we've got a lot of time on our hands. This is a great opportunity, perhaps of any opportunity in our lifetime and in our generation or multiple generations, to really take seriously our belief, but also to bring before God all of our unbeliefs. It's been said that God sometimes calms the storm, but He sometimes lets the storms rage and calms His children. Well, be that as it may, what's important today is that we know we can bring God our doubts in these days, and know that He knows that He hears us and He loves us. We can trust that He will give us what we ask or whatever is best for us. And we can know that we are loved. Metropolitan Boris Kudziak, I hope many of you have seen his YouTube message this past week. He said that God's love for us means that He wants us to live in this world and the next. Let's hold before that, uh, that good news before us, brothers and sisters, that our God wants to, us to live, and He wants us to be at peace, and He wants us, more than ever, I think, He wants us to recognize that we are the body of Christ that we are together as a community of faith, that we are strong, and that we are instruments and icons of His love. His love is a system. Amen.